seated if you wish to for a few minutes. Amen. I got a couple things that I want to share with you and a couple things. Thank you, and Naomi. It's good to have Naomi and Roberto back, and, and uh, it was, it's good to see that they made the trip, and they made it across the border, and, and, and it, was, it was much different this morning when uh, they came in to start warming up the music and everything. And when Dave and Faith were doing it, it was kind of quiet and the band was coming. When Naomi showed up with her crew and I heard the noise, I said, they're back. <laughs> they're back. But it's good to have them back. It's good. We missed you and we're good, glad to have them back with us. And uh, it is such a, such a joy. Uh, I know that you guys enjoyed yourself. And I got to be with the family, and, and I saw some of the pictures, and, and um, it, it's beautiful. Amen? Right? Hadassah was telling me just how pretty it was, so, and uh, she was telling me about it. My wife really, she saw, after she saw that chicken hanging up, she said, I'm never going there. <laughs> Don't tell her that. She'll never eat again. So... I have a couple of announcements that I want to make, and uh, I need to get um, your attention to help me with this. My wife is going to be decorating the church with Christ Christmas decorations, and she's asking for those that can help on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. They are going to be uh, decorating the walls and everything, so she needs both women and men that can help on Thursday from 6 to 8, and then also from sat on Saturday from 10 to 11 and we need to make sure that everybody that can help will help. And uh, again, um, she just said, make sure that you emphasize, I need both men and women to help uh, with the decorations. And I said, okay. Also, Faith asked me not to forget to announce that they will have play practice Wednesday night. It's very important that everybody that's in the play is there. Um, they will be having practice on Sunday evening tonight. And also on Saturday uh, at 11, this coming Saturday. So make sure that you are at the practices. It's, it's really coming up quick, and they need to get some practice time in. So if you can, at all possible, we are going to have a water baptism service this evening at 5 o'clock. 
Um, I have those that want to be water baptized. If you have any questions about that, please see me or sign up in the sheet in the back uh, by the booth back there. I have um, several that have already mentioned about wanting to be and this will be our last water baptism service until the first of the year. So um, we're going to do it again in January, but um, this will be our last one this year. So make sure that if that's what you want to do, sign up or see me and let me know, and we'll get that taken care of. I want to also remind everybody on the announcements, if you will, go to lifechurchofgod.org. Some of you are watching online. Maybe you have some questions about some of the things that are going on. All the announcements and everything that we are talking about here are on there. Um, we want to remind everybody to check that out, and uh, you can see the details uh, of what's going on. December the 2nd is our uh, sons game that we are inviting everyone to go to. Um, the tickets, $5 from the ticket sales of each ticket that's sold will go towards the Indian, or Arizona youth camp, right? Youth camp, Winterfest, youth. It will be going towards our youth camp. But anyways, I want to make sure that if you want to, and of course, if you're a basketball fan at all, you know the Suns are a good team to watch anyways, but uh, go and, and, and support that, and then they're going to be doing, the, do you know if they're having a concert that night or anything? They're, they, I think so. Um, so anyways, uh, just to let you know about that, you can look on the website and find out more details, and, uh, and we can see that. Amen? James, come tell us a little bit about what happened yesterday. Come and give us a testimony. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, so yesterday was our Food for Life distribution. Uh, we were able to feed some people. We fed 90 people, 90 plus people in about 30 minutes. And so God is, uh, God is definitely blessing that. Uh, I say in 30 minutes because we ran out of food. So Food for Life and, and the church here is needing your help. So we're needing your help. We can't do it on our own. We definitely are needing help. We had to turn away over a dozen people yesterday, uh, and they kept coming, and just because there's not food in our pantry at the moment. There's obviously a great need in the community right now. Um, God is sending people from all over the, the city, from all over the surrounding cities, and they're needing our help. They're needing to get food and to get um, the love and grace of, of God. And so we're in need of donations. So whether or not that is a financial donation or a food donation, we definitely need to fill up this pantry one way or another. So right now, things that we're specifically in need of, we're in need of uh, jars of peanut butter. Uh, we're in need of canned chicken breast, uh, canned pasta sauce canned fruit, boxed mac and cheese, uh, canned veggies, canned soup, all of it's gone and we're needing to replenish our supply. Um, any, any packaged meals, prepackaged meals as well, something like that, but we are needing those things right now and we're desperately in need. So if you want to go ahead and check out a list, a comprehensive list, it's on our website. Um, just go to lifechurchofgod.org. Um, and you'll find Food for Life there. You can see the list. You can also see a link to, to give directly to the pantry as well. Um, and if you're going to donate online, it's pretty easy to select uh, Food for Life and be able to give that way as well. So uh, we are desperately in need, and we, des we want to go ahead and keep, keep blessing the community because that's what this church is really all about, is being a blessing to this community and being the hands and feet of Christ um, as we are presenting ourselves to the community. So, Amen. Yeah. Thank you, James. Amen. It was, it, and helping out the little bit that I was doing yesterday, but when, when it came down to it, we were, we were literally, we ran out of everything we had. Uh, we, we had some, a few, few items that were left, and, and the lady pulled in, and she was in very desperate need. She came in, and she said, I, I've been to a couple other pantries, and everybody's low. Our chain link that comes, what we get from Midwest Food Bank and a couple other vendors that, that we pick from, and uh, they, they're low. And so we're, we're asking you to help us to restock. But when, you, when she pulled in the parking lot, we'd already turned away a couple, and, and she was very much in need. So I said something to Heather, and Heather um, 
went in and she said, I'll try to scrounge up a box. And we, we sent her away with a box of food, but we literally gave away everything we had um, in the pantry. There's a few things, that, a few odds and end items. And so we want to fill that back up. And at Christmas, coming into the Christmas season, uh, we want to make sure that we can bless these families and try to get food to them. Um, hopefully everything will start flowing again a little better than it is right now. But I just wanted to, to share that with you. But it was, it was the hardest thing when I, I told her um, we just didn't have any food left. And when she looked at me, I, I thought, I, I, here I, I go home, and I, I have leftovers in my refrigerator and stuff that we don't eat, and we end up throwing away. And here's a person just asking for something. Uh, we can make a difference, amen? And we can make that difference, amen? Let's do that. I want you to stand with me again. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and, and uh, as we open uh, the service, we're going to take a few minutes, greet one another, share a good how do you do to somebody, tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord. Amen? So let's close our eyes, let's bow our heads, and we'll begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your blessings that you've blessed us with. As we come together, Lord, we want to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Let everything your word says ha that has breath praise the Lord. And today, God, I thank you for the opportunity once again to worship you. Now, as we open our hearts and our minds to give you glory and honor and praise, would you inhabit the praises of your people once again and move upon our hearts? We ask you, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Greet one another and tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord.
your name is wonderful. Your name is powerful. There is no other God like you, Father. I thank you for all that you've done.
wonderful name and a powerful name he is. He is our mighty counselor. He is all that we need. Thank you, Jesus. We are here to worship you for that we do. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the one who gave his life for us. You are worthy, Father. You are worthy of it all. Thank you, Father. Oh, God. 
time. Come on, make it known. You are worthy of it all. Come on, tell the world. He is, he is. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Now in your own way, would you just lift up your hands and tell him that he deserves the glory in your life today? Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor and praise. You are worthy, O oh God. We exalt you. We magnify your name. God, I thank you for everything and all that you are and all that you do. Let everything that I do praise your name and give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you wish to today. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. How many of you had a good Thanksgiving? Amen. How many of you ate too much? Well, my message today is on gluttony, so no, just kidding, just kidding. Uh, I wanted to share with you a little bit about this. We are finishing our series on the um, Thanksgiving, and uh, when Naomi came in, she had been gone, and she showed up this morning, and when I pulled up the songs, she had Christmas songs on, and I said, you're ahead of me one week. So she, I thank her for taking time to do that, switching, and, and she, the songs that she picked fit into my message perfectly, and I said, thank you so much for it. Um, but I, I want to finish my series that I've been preaching on about being truly thankful, and uh, we, it's just, I know that so many times we think, God, you know I'm thankful because I go to church. You know I'm thankful because I pay my tithe. You know I'm thankful. But we need to understand that God wants to hear it from us, that we thank Him, that we worship Him, and that we praise Him. God has been better to us than we ever deserved, and we need to worship Him and praise Him. I wanted to just give the Lord thanks for, for all of His blessings. Brother Farr is going to be finishing up on Wednesday night with his series from the book of Revelation. He is in chapter 22. He's going to be wrapping that study up this week. So if you are here, um, you can also go online. If you've missed the, uh, the, the series, it's online. It's on our, our website. You can go there, lifechurchofgod.org. You can pull that up and, and follow along with him and catch up. And then Wednesday night, he's going to wrap it up with the, his study. And I thank the Lord so much for him and his blessing of teaching. Um, he, he told me, he said, I am, I'm, I, I, it's been a tough one. Uh, he's got a hard time sometimes getting in. Sometimes he's, he's, he's hurt in his back. He's not feeling well. But you know what? God has kept him and kept him faithful, and he is, he's doing well. So we wanted to say that um, don't miss that Wednesday night. Again, we start at 6. Baptism service tonight will be at 5 o'clock. If anyone is going to be baptized, you need to sign up in the back or see me, and we are going to do that service. Uh, Pastor Barman will be right on the tails of your service, so we'll, if you, anybody that wants to can be uh, baptized, and then we're going to have play practice at 6, so make sure that uh, you're ready for that, and we want to get into that right away. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of Ephesians. You should have this one memorized. I've preached from it for the last three weeks, but I want to go one more time to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 20. And we want to get into our message about being truly thankful. I thank the Lord um, again. I, I just thank the Lord. We have, we have had a, it's been a, been a tough week on some. Um, we have uh, Brother Paul, who usually comes to the first service. Um, he's uh, called me this week and lost his brother um, through COVID virus, and he was... 75 years old, said he was ready to go. He had some complications from other things, but lost his brother. Then I finished talking to him, walked out of the doors, walked down and out on the sidewalk, and then Renee was walking in. And Sister Renee met me up the stairs. She said, Pastor, I, we need your prayers for our home. And I said, well, well sure, what's going on? And she said, well, I, I lost one of my best friends, and I lost my, one of my relatives, my aunt, uh, an older aunt, she said, had passed away. Uh, this week, and then Chuck's family, he lost three of his relatives this week. So 
there's been a whole lot of things going on. Uh, I told you before, I've done, in the last three months, I've done seven memorial services. It's amazing to me all that, that this is going on. But you know what? That just means the, the timing is, is, is more important for us to be ready and prepared for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be ready in your hearts. It's not time to be, be slothful in your relationship with Him, but prioritize that relationship with Christ. Making that something that's very important both in your life and your everyday testimony of giving Him thanks. Amen? Amen. Giving Him thanks for, for who He is. Giving thanks always. Things are, there are crazy in this world today, but we need to stop and begin to say, Lord, we give you thanks. The Bible says in Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and verse 20, it says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God, the Father, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You guys barely got up in time for that one. Amen. But, uh, so thank you. The teens have, have started doing that in their uh, Bible study and they stand for the Word of God and reverence to it. Amen? Amen? And sometimes we need to take time to do that, and we need to reverence God's Word, and I respect them for doing that. Um, giving Him thanks and giving thanks to God. The act of giving thanks is giving thanks to, uh, uh, is to appreciate something given or done to you, to place value on something that you have received. When I look at that, sometimes you can say, thanks in a, in a positive way to reinforce, but how many of you know you can say thanks in a sarcastic way? How many of you, when you, how many of you, when you pull up in front of the, the gas pump and you, you put the gas pump in your car, now you say, thanks, Joe Biden. <laughs> now, now, come on now, this is just a little humor, hang with me, it's just, so when he, when he, and, and, or, 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 or you, or you, 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 you get to, to the place to where you're, you're saying thank you sarcastically for, you know, something that you get to do around the house. Thank you for giving the trash so that I can t- carry it out. Thank you for doing that, hon. Um, uh, sometimes we, we say in our own way, thank you in a, in a, in a way of being thankful for all things and being, giving thanks. Sometimes we can say it in a positive way. And sometimes we say it in a teenage way, sarcastically. We say it in a, in a, in a way that, that, that thank you can mean something and have value to it. And sometimes we say thank you and don't really mean it. And sometimes we say thank you and it just rolls off our lips and we don't really realize or, or look at what we're saying thank, thanks to the Lord for. Being truly thankful means that we think what we say, we verbalize it, and we say it to the one who did it for us. This morning I'm going to preach a little bit about giving thanks to the Lord and giving Him the glory and the honor and the praise for all that He is and all that He's done for us. Now, I thank the Lord. We, we, we didn't have a perfect Thanksgiving this year. This was a tough one. Uh, one of the people in my house tested positive. My, my daughter-in-law tested positive for COVID. We've quarantined her. We've, we've sprayed and, and given off. <laughs> all the germs and everything. The baby couldn't have a visit because the, somebody tested positive in the house. So we're, we're all of, all, and I sat down at the table and there was just three of us at my dining room table this year for Thanksgiving. And usually we have people sitting everywhere. The house is full and all the grandkids are running everywhere. And, and I, I thought, man. But you know what? I, I stopped long enough to think about. I'm thankful. I'm thankful because... And everything, the Bible says, give thanks. In every situation, we can give thanks. There's a, there's a reason to be thankful for everything. Sometimes we don't always understand it or see it to be thankful for until after the fact or after the circumstance. We don't always see a reason to be thankful, sometimes because we don't really understand the good that God is trying to do in us. When I thought about that, the good thing about it, when I, when I ate dinner... My wife fixed food, and, and I realized for, that we have a lot of leftovers now. So I'm thankful because we didn't have... No, I'm just kidding. That, that, but we have... We, we got turkey, we got ham, we got... No, I'm not inviting you over. I'm just telling you what we had in, 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 in the leftovers. So, but we had, we had food, and, and, and I thank the Lord. But it just wasn't the same. Some of you had Thanksgiving this year, and it wasn't the same. There might have been somebody that was missing, a family member or a person that you normally would, would have there at Thanksgiving, and the Lord chose to take them home. 
And, and, and the only thing I can tell you is, is that we still have to give Him thanks because He knows what He's doing. We give thanks in all things, and sometimes we give thanks for, for silly things. And this, this next little bit is something that I did a few years ago, and somebody asked me if I would do this again, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. So I want you to give thanks for reasons to be thankful that you burnt the turkey. Now, if you're taking notes, you might want to write these down because this might come in handy sometime. Reasons to be thankful that you burnt the bird. Go ahead. The first one is that salmonella won't be a problem. Everyone will think your turkey is blackened. Uninvited guests will think twice next year. Your cheese, broccoli, lima bean casserole will gain new found appreciation. Pets won't bother you for scraps. No one will overeat. Amen. That's good. The smoke alarm is due for testing. Now, I like this one right here. Carving the bird will give you a cardio workout. You'll get to the dessert quicker. That's right, Ramon, right? Right, right? The guys will be able to use the bird for football later. You won't have to face three weeks of turkey leftovers. I, I think about all that, and, and, and that's just a little humor to say, to say you know, listen, here's what I'm going to tell you. Be thankful. I, 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 I've shared with you, James shared with you a little bit about yesterday. Sometimes we take for granted what we have and we're not thankful for what we have. We think of what we don't have or what we want and we fail to see it. I, I, I'm thankful for, for so many things. I, 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 sarcastically, I was saying yesterday, I'm so thankful. We, had, uh, the, we went to the store uh, on Friday. We went Black Friday shopping. And... And um, I'm not a shopper. I don't like crowds. I don't like being, and, and I'm, I'm in the store and people are knocking me down. I've got the stroller with the baby in it and people are pushing me out of the way. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I, we went to the Crocs store. <laughs> and we were getting, I shouldn't say this because one of my grandkids might be watching this, but we were, we were in the uh, uh, store and, and it was so crowded and I'm waiting in a line of people and I'm thinking, I was being sarcastic. I said, thank you that I get to go shopping. But then I begin to really th think about this because when, when we saw people that, that came into the food pantry and some of us may be doing the same thing when you open your pantry and you say, I don't have anything to eat. You got a refrigerator that's full and a pantry that's full. You just don't like what you have. So how many of you, when you open your closet, maybe you did this this morning, and you open that closet and you look at it and you say, I don't have anything to wear. And you got a closet full of clothes. You girls are, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, no, <laughs> Sometimes we, and here's the thing, a lady, when she pulled in yesterday, she said, Pastor, is there any way that I can get some food? We don't have anything. We don't have anything. And, and we, had, we, had already, we had already done our, our, our food pantry, and we had to close down. In 30 minutes, we had run out of everything we had in the pantry. There was, literally, we had, we had wiped out everything. And so we turned around, and, and We'd already turned several people away because we just didn't have it. But when I saw her, I couldn't. I couldn't. And I said, I'll, I'll find something. And I told Heather, I said, Heather, she goes, Pastor, I'll, I'll try to put together a box. I'll put, I'll put some things together. And she went in there and she started pulling some things together. And, and, I, and I, when I put it in her car, I could see the fact that this is, she didn't have anything except that. She said I'd already been to two other food pantries and they didn't have anything. They'd given all of it away for Thanksgiving, and they just didn't have anything left. And I thought, Lord, help me to be thankful for what I do have. Not, not, for, not, not, not looking at my closet and saying, I don't have anything to wear. When there are people that literally have the clothes on their back, and that's all they have. There, when, when people can open a pantry and we can say, I don't like this, and I don't want that. And, Folks, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes we need to realize how thankful we are and blessed we really are with what we have. God has blessed us and given to us. And we are a blessed people. We are blessed, and we need to stop long enough to begin to say thank you for it. Amen? 
even if you, even if Ramon's turkey wasn't the best in, in the world, it, it, it was still, yours was not as black as that no. turkey, but I want to think this morning about truly being thankful. And so if you have your, if you stay with me this morning a little bit, the, I want to go back and review a little bit. Truly thankful. The first thing we talked about was through our lifestyle. We must be thankful by the way we live and the way we act and how we are. What we, how our lifestyle must represent the thankfulness. Instead of, uh, of always hoping and wishing that we had something else. Come on, how, how many of us could just stop this year right now and say, Thank you, Lord, you have been good to me. I, I'm con- the Bible says to be content in all things, both in, the, in the, the, the problems of your life, but also be content in what you have. Amen? We have created an environment in this country where we always want instead of being satisfied with what we have. And, and we need to learn and turn this thing around to where we're thankful for what we have so that God can bless us with more. Amen? If God won't give you more if you're not satisfied with what you have. I thought about that this morning. and That's why the Scripture tells us in Hebrews 13, chapter and verse 15, it says, Therefore... By Him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. We need to say thank you. When He says by the fruit of our lips, it's to vocalize the praise. How many of you have ever um, meant to say thank you and didn't say it? How many of you just, well, you know, I, I mean to say, they, they know I'm grateful. And sometimes we need to say it. I, I talked about it last week and a couple of weeks ago, and I told you about when I, when I my wife, and she used to say, "Hun, hun, you, you used to tell me all the time that you loved me, and now you don't." And I said, "Oh, you know I do. I watch the the baby sometimes. I do the trash. I clean. I do all these things." And she said, "No, but it's just nice to hear that that I love you. You say it all the time, don't you? All the time." All, he says it all. Okay, she's laughing, he's nodding. So we're going to... Here's what happens. Sometimes we just say, Oh, you know I do. The verbalization of it is something that we need to do. In the same way, we need to say to, to God, out of, the, out of our own voice, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. We could, we could just think about the thankfulness, to giving, giving him thanks for who he is and what he's done. Thanking God for his many blessings of all that he has. So, so, uh, we spend time, uh, so much time verbalizing what we want And what we don't have, many of our prayer times are filled with our want list instead of our time just to say thank you, God, for who He is. We need to understand why we say thank you. Last week we talked about the idea of being thankful and and how that we are thankful and why we are thankful. The Bible tells us in Psalms 103, verses 1 and 2, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. One of the things we talked about is all the blessings that God has given to us. That he has blessed us. And and he has given to us in so many different ways. And so many different things. Listen, we can if you read all of that in Psalms 103, you can go down through the list of all the many tangible things. But sometimes we don't even realize all that God has blessed us with. And I told you we need to make a list. You need to sit down and write, start writing down. All that God, and you will have a folder full. You will literally run out of paper before you run out of things that that, that God has blessed you with. And when we think about how good God has been to us, how much He has blessed us, then we can truly realize how thankful we should be. When we think about the idea of giving thanks to Him, we must say it. We must make that a verbalization and say thank you to Him. It is one thing, it is better to say thank you and not mean it, than to mean it and not say it. Today, I just want to, I just want to talk about giving thanks to God. Not just saying, not just 
I mean, you can be thankful for a lot of different things. You can be thankful to a lot of different people. You can be thankful for, for all the things, but, but every, the Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. The, the blessings of God and what He has blessed us with, the Bible tells us that He has blessed us. And giving God thanks is something that's very important to us. It brings the blessing of God more pertinent to us. I, I, I found this story in some of my old notes, and so I thought I'd, I'd share it with you, about an atheist man that was walking through the woods and admiring all of the uh, accidents that happened from the great big bang and the evolution, how evolution had evolved, and looked at the majestic trees and the powerful rivers and what beautiful animals were there. And he said to himself as he was walking through, what a special thing. As he was walking alongside the river, all of a sudden he heard a rustling in the bushes. That rustling, he turned and looked and see what it was, and it was about a seven-foot grizzly bear that was charging towards him and beginning to run after him. He looked over his shoulder, and as he looked over his shoulder, he saw the grizzly coming closer, and he began to run faster. And he was running as fast as he could, tears in his eyes, hardly being able to see as he was running down the path. Looking again, seeing the bear getting even closer, his heart pounding as hard as it could. He was running so fast, he fell and tripped and fell face first. And as he rolled over to, to see, the grizzly bear was right on top of him with his paw raised, getting ready to strike him. He cried out and he said, oh my God! Time stopped. The bear froze. The forest was silent. The river stopped. The birds quit singing. And everything was quiet. A bright light shone upon the man, and a voice came from the sky. You deny my existence all these years, teaching others I don't exist, and even credit creation with a cosmic accident. Do you expect me to help you out of this predicament? Am I to count you as a believer? The atheist looked directly into the light and said, I would feel like a hypocrite to become a Christian after all these years, but perhaps you could make the bear a Christian. Very well, the voice said. The light went out. The river began to run. The sounds of the forest began to resume. The birds began to sing and chirp as they were, were going. And the man looked up and saw the bear drop his paw. Then he put his other paw together, and he bowed his head, and he spoke. Lord, for this food which I am about to receive, I am very thankful, truly thankful. Some of you are saying, I didn't think that story was going to go that way. <laughs> giving thanks to God and giving thanks to God for what he has blessed us with. God has been so good to us. And we sometimes take for granted all that God has blessed us with and all that we have. The first thing that I want to say is we need to thank God for the victory that He gives us. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and verse 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, we sing the song that says, Victory in Jesus, He's my Savior forever. He saved me and He bought me with His redeeming blood. Come on, we, we, we can sing that song about, and we're singing about the, the victory in the future, but how many of you know that victory happens every day because we remember what Jesus Christ has done? The best thing that I can tell you is this, amen. We know we win. It's written in the Word of God, and God cannot lie. We win, amen. I don't know if we have any any football fans here or anything like that. And if you're not, that's okay. But Ken Sanders, I hope he's watching this recording and, and, and he's criticizing all of Heather's switching to the cameras and everything. But, but I can tell you, here's, here's what I, I, I was watching yesterday. All the sports announcers were saying Ohio State is going to beat Michigan. It's a lock. They're going to go to the final, finals and the playoffs and they're, they're, they're going to win. And they'd already determined the fact that they were counting who was going to win. And Michigan ended up winning yesterday. They not even they beat them. They trounced them. What I'm going to tell you something is, is you better be careful about celebrating before you it's over. Come on, amen. And and, and here's what I'm going to tell you something. If that was the case in following Jesus Christ, I could understand it. 
But see, it's, it's already determined, How It's already done. Chris, it's already done. We win. No matter what comes our way, we win. We are victorious. Church, we'll, we, we live and walk around here like, oh, it's so bad. Lord, we're going through some tough times. Church, we need to turn that around and say, I got the victory in my soul. Amen. Amen. Come on. Some of us, we need to realize that Jesus Christ has already fought the battle and we win. Amen. Remember, the Bible says we will enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Come on. And that begins right now. That begins here. Amen. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven. We don't have to wait till our problems are gone. If we start praising Him now and giving Him thanks, the victory's on its way. Amen. Remember the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness? They kept complaining from the time that God delivered them from Egypt. They complained. And they complained. They complained. They complain because, well, now we, we got out here and now we're going to die in this wilderness. God's got us by this Red Sea. We're going to die in this wilderness. We're going to drown in this sea. We're going to get killed by Egypt. Come on. Now, th does that sound like anybody? Don't look at the person beside you. you it may be. You know what? I, the, the, when, they, when they left Egypt, they left shouting. But when they ran into the Red Sea, they began to complain. And they thought, come on, what we need to do is start shouting and stay shouting, amen? I, wanna, I don't want to go into the, uh, heaven with the gloom and doom. I want to go into heaven celebrating, amen? amen. I want to look at the, uh, I want to pray, because every time you praise the Lord and you begin to claim that promise of victory, what you do is you begin to trounce on the works of the enemy and the devil, and you begin to say, the victory is mine in Jesus' name. Come on, amen? The victory that we have already as we give Him thanks, giving thanks to God. You see, victory can come in many different ways. Sometimes it's through our practice. Sometimes it's through our preparation. But one of the best things we can do is start praising Him and the victory will come through Jesus Christ. He's already won. When He rose from the dead, He claimed the promise of our victory. 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 14, it says, Now, thanks be to God who who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of His knowledge in every place. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15 says, Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. Now, I want to address both of those. The first thing that I want to look at is, is that we have the triumph, the celebration of, of that victory. It's a process of celebration and praise, the triumph that God gives us. That is, the, that is a victory. That's standing on the chest of the enemy saying, I won. I, I, I can tell you this, that, that there are so many different times to celebrate and ways to celebrate, and the triumph has come. I never will forget when I was in, in wrestling, and my first year in wrestling, I, I lost every match. I was terrible. I, I was learning, but I wasn't very good. The only thing good about it was I was lightweight. And I could make this, the, that's when I was skinny. That's a lot of Thanksgivings ago. <laughs> Pete, don't, don't go there. <laughs> but I can tell you that after I, I went to all these matches and we got down to one of the matches and, and I, I came in to the, to the meet and, and the guy that's doing the weighing there, he, he was from our school and he was one of our trainers and when he was running the scales, he, he looked at me and he said, you made weight. He said, Good, you might win. You're going to win tonight because they don't have anybody in your weight bracket. And I started going, oh, all right, I won. Woohoo! I won. I got it. I finally won a match. And we lined them up on the mat, and we were across from the guy, uh, team, and I was looking, and I was thinking, there ain't going to be nobody there. And I looked up, and sure enough, they had a guy that had made weight, and he ended up, and I looked, <laughs> Lost again. Be careful. Be careful in your celebrations. Be careful of your glory that you give. Giving the glory to God. My victory comes in Him. David said, it's not my might nor by power, but by 
His Spirit. Come on, amen. Our victory comes through the blessings of the Lord. And when we overcome the enemy, we need to realize our triumph is not in me, but it's in Him to give Him glory and honor and praise. The Bible tells us to be thankful for the, the gifts, the indescribable gifts. That word indescribable means without the ability to comprehend. We can't put it in human terms of all that God has blessed us with. Oh, I told you last week to write down some of the things that God has done and some of the things that God has done for me. I can write down, you spared my life in a car accident. You kept me from, from being sick. You, you, you kept me safe. You, you, and I can go on and on and on and I can keep writing down these things of all the things. But there's no way that I can describe in my human voice and my human knowledge. This, this little thing right here, I don't have the words to describe all that God has done for me. I can't. Because there are times even, even when God moved behind the scenes that I didn't recognize it. The best thing about the indescribable gift is also the attributes that God blesses us with. Gifts that, that God has given to us to be useful in the body of Christ. Talents and things that He has blessed us with that we have set on the back shelf. Indescribable and, and, and unknown. Also, the, the, the idea of the Holy Spirit, the indescribable power of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God moving on, on the half and the life of the believer to be able to overcome and to work against the works of the enemy. The power of God in the life of the believer. The power of God. And it is, listen, I don't know about you, but. I mean, I'm, I'm full of songs today. Maybe I'm just... Remember that, that old song that used to say, We've got the power in the name of Jesus. You remember that song? We've got the power... The teenagers are looking like, huh? In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power... In the name of the Lord. In, within each believer, in each of us, within the, the life of every believer is the power of God living in you to change. The God that created the universe, the God that formed it all, the God that, that provided for you over and over again, that same power lives in you. And we need to live a victorious, celebrating life because we have it in us. Some of us, when we face the challenges of life, we go to pieces, we fall apart. We forget the power of God that lives in us. Come on, amen? And we run in panic and we run in fear because our mind forgets the power that lives within us. God's indescribable gift, His indescribable work that He changes the world with. The Bible tells us in Psalms, Chapter 34, verses 1 through 3. Roberto and Naomi, if you guys will come. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear it and be glad of it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. When I think about the goodness of God and the praises of God, to be thankful to Him for all that He's done. Yeah. Now, here's what we can do. And what we do a lot of times in our, our walk and our daily life is we think about what we don't have instead of being thankful for what we do. Come on. Our, 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 we, 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 we don't stop long enough to realize how blessed we really are. How blessed we really are. Sometimes we just, we need to stop and thank God for what He's done in us. How good He's been to us. To bless us, to keep us, to sustain us, to give us the victory. And, and, and when we stop long enough, we begin to thank Him for who He is and what He's done. How that He has kept us and maintained us. How He's provided for us. There's no way. I can't. I can't do anything except say thank you. Some of us, I, I, I see the world in, in a, maybe in a, in, a, in a process because some of us are so busy complaining that we fail to praise. We, 
we're complaining because it's not our way. It's not the way we want it. It didn't happen the way I wanted it to. The Bible says give thanks. This morning, I'm going to challenge you today to give thanks to the Lord, to be, to be reminded of all the blessings that God has given to us, to be thankful. I want you to right now, if you will, just to stand with me if you can, all across this place. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. up right now and I want you to begin to thank the Lord because he's given you life he's given you he's given you his son Jesus Christ it's your choice now what will you do with the victory that he's given you what will you do with the promise that he's given you every good and perfect gift every blessing in the describable power of God moving in the life of you you, you as a believer are we going to wait until we get over on the other side are we going to wait until the victory comes are we going to wait until the problems are gone we do, we're going to miss the opportunity to thank the Lord for His goodness and His mercy and His grace. Lord, we worship You. We praise You today. And Lord, there, there, I, I believe there are those that are in this congregation that are like me. That God, we have to repent today and begin to say, Lord, forgive me for complaining. Forgive me for, 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 for not worshiping You and thanking You in the way that You deserve. God, I pray that today, Heavenly Father, we would, we would be a thankful people. We would be a grateful nation. We would be a grateful people, God, to give you glory and honor and praise. God, we worship you. We praise you. Lord, we love you, Lord. Ah, we love you. Come on. Lord, settle down in this place. First thing right now to be truly thankful is giving your life, surrendering it, to realize you can't do it in yourself, but you need the help and the, and the strength and the power of Jesus Christ in your life. You need that to give you the victory that you need in your life. And if you've never surrendered your heart to Christ, or perhaps maybe you've been, you've been holding on to the controls of it, I'm going to tell you something. The best thing you can do is say, I put Jesus Christ first in my life today. I surrender my life to Him. Today, right now, Lord, let your healing flow. Let, you, let, let this be a life-changing message, God, to bring us to the place where we're thankful for who you are and what you've done. God, we give you thanks. today, but as we leave this place, to be truly thankful for all that you have done and all that you are doing in us. I give you thanks, God. Not for a life without problems, but a life that is satisfied in you. And I stand upon your promises and I stand in your word. And Lord, may I live and may I say I thank you for all that you do. God bless you. Hug somebody's neck. Tell them God has been good to me this year. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.